sure to check out the link in the description for a big discount on all Star Wars merch. With that said, let's get on with the video. Thanks to the recent release of Jedi Fallen Order, we've gotten a lot of backstory on the mysterious Inquisitors that exist in Star Wars Rebels and are now prominently featured in the game. The Inquisitors being former Jedi that returned to the dark side of the Force, most of them following the events of Order 66, and were tortured at the hands of Darth Vader as well as Darth Sidious, to eventually be transformed into Dark Jedi, who do the bidding of the Sith. Dark Jedi, whose sole purpose it is, is to hunt down their former brothers and sisters of the Jedi Order that managed to escape the clutches of the Empire just following the initial stage of Order 66, and the Great Jedi Purge. With all the attention that the canon Inquisitors are getting though, I wanted to highlight a different type of Darksider that hunted down Jedi exclusively in Legends continuity, and a mysterious organization that answered directly to Emperor Palpatine instead of Vader as well as Sidious, an offshoot of the Emperor's royal guards that again, it was their sole purpose to hunt down and kill Jedi, but also a section of the royal guards that it was revealed were actually force sensitive and could use and utilize the dark side of the force, although it is not believed that these individuals were former Jedi. For today's expose, we will be following the Emperor's shadow guards and their purpose and role throughout the Empire. The origins of the mysterious shadow guard that answer directly and solely to Emperor Palpatine actually starts during the Clone Wars era conflict. During the end of the Clone Wars conflict, on the orders of Palpatine himself, Dooku ordered his own Dark Jedi Asajj Ventress to hunt down the Sun Guard. The Sun Guard were an organization and a cult that actually worshipped the Sith, and that Palpatine utilized during the Clone Wars conflict. However, he found a lot of them to be unstable, and their allegiance brought into question. Therefore, why he sent Asajj Ventress, along with a large Separatist force, to wipe out all of the Sun Guards with the exceptions of just a few of them. The few that Palpatine, Darth Sidious, deemed the most devoted to his cause and the cause of the Sith. It was in fact from the Sun Guard that Emperor Palpatine then resolved to pick out all the four sensitive members of the cult. A little bit more detail on the Sun Guard is they were considered one of the best military forces in the entire galaxy, only being rivaled by the sheer numbers of the Separatist droid army and the Republic clone army. Ultimately though, what was left of the Sun Guard would ultimately become Emperor Palpatine's royal guard. As a small side note, if you guys would like, I can break down the entire origins of the Red Imperial Guard in a later video, as again, in this video, we'll be focusing on the Shadow Guards. Back on topic though, after selecting the Force Sensitives that once belonged to the Sun Guard, Emperor Palpatine created a subsect of the Red Imperial Guards, deeming them Shadow Troopers. Following the official rise of the Empire, the Shadow Guard would train for several years under the Inquisitors, as they were not yet ready to be mobilized by the Empire, and Emperor Palpatine believed that despite them being strong in the Force, but more strong combatively, they were still not ready to hunt down the remaining Jedi. And so for the first few years of the Empire, he left that job predominantly to the Inquisitors. It would only be towards the later years of the Empire that the Shadow Guards were officially mobilized by Emperor Palpatine, most notably in their efforts to hunt down the failed apprentice of Darth Vader, Galen Merrick Starkiller. It was at this point that we actually learned that there were quite a bit of Shadow Guards that were mobilized to hunt down specifically Starkiller, showing that Emperor Palpatine did in fact have great faith in their order, and with a lot of the Inquisitors at this point in time being either killed off or off on several other missions. In nearly every case, Star Sidious would send at least several Shadow Guards to hunt down a Force Sensitive, showcasing of course that although they could use the Force and some minor abilities having specifically to do with the dark side of the Force, they were not on the level of Inquisitors or Dark Jedi, as Palpatine had purposefully tempered their training, as he did not want any interior rivals to rise among the Empire itself, any other potential apprentices for Lord Vader to train to one day overthrow Sidious. Sidious wanted it to be that in a blink of an eye, he could absolutely decimate the entire core of the Shadow Troopers. Apparently, despite being extremely powerful against non-Force sensitives, the Shadow Troopers proved to be somewhat ineffective against Jedi, specifically though the Dark Jedi Starkiller Galen Merritt. As the last known Shadow Trooper that was ever encountered was in fact killed by Galen Merrick as a last line of defense for Emperor Palpatine in the Death Star 1 throne room. After this event in the Star Wars timeline, no Shadow Troopers were ever encountered. But again, this doesn't mean that they weren't around. I just speculate that they were off other places in the galaxy hunting down the last remnants of the Jedi, and that slowly but surely, despite encountering some success, their numbers were dwindled. As far as characteristics concerning the 
Shadow Guard, they were actually a mystery even among Imperials, as even Imperials, high-ranking ones for that matter, didn't know their origin. It is believed that the Shadow Guards actually belong to a single elite unit among Emperor Palpatine's direct command, which makes sense concerning their relatively small numbers. It should also be noted that they were in fact among the Emperor's Royal Guard, and were considered a part of the Royal Guard. Another trait of the Shadow Troopers is they were completely silent, leading many to speculate, myself included, that they had been all but brainwashed by the Empire to serve only Palpatine, meaning that if they were ever given a direct command by Darth Vader, they would not follow it as it did not come from the Emperor himself. Emperor Palpatine in fact created the Shadow Guard for not only the purpose of hunting down Jedi, but also lesser Force sensitives. As Palpatine did not want to bother Darth Vader especially, but also the Inquisitors with hunting down individuals that he believed could simply just use the Force but had not been trained. Therefore, he would dispatch the Shadow Guards to take care of them as they did not pose a threat and the Inquisitors and Vader, it simply would have been a waste of their time to hunt down Force sensitive children. It was only though when it was absolutely necessary also that they would be under the command of Darth Vader and it would only be under these circumstances that they would take orders from him. One of the other main duties of an Imperial Shadow Guard would be to guard the Emperor directly. The Emperor would often keep them around when he believed that a Force sensitive was approaching him, even Darth Vader, if only if they were a momentary distraction for Darth Sidious to then attack his adversary. Most of the time when guarding Emperor Palpatine, the Shadow Guards would linger again in the shadows, and he would let the Red Royal Guards stand more in the center of the room, as part of a big distraction before the Shadow Guards could attack. Many high-ranking Imperials speculated that the Shadow Guards could in fact have been former Jedi themselves, who were brainwashed and tortured like the Inquisitors. Again though, this was never proven in Star Wars Legends, and it's a theory that I don't necessarily agree with. Again, my theory is, is that the Shadow Guards were actually just members from the Sun Guard that showed some affinity with the Force, although not on the level of a Jedi or nowhere near the level of a Sith Lord. And again, this was simply just a rumor widespread throughout the Empire, for those of them that even knew about the Shadow Guards. Most times when entering a large battlefield engagement, the Shadow Guards would also be escorted by a battalion of Stormtroopers, as it is believed that they each had a specific squad of troopers under their direct command, although admittedly Starkiller made short work out of all of them. As far as force abilities that a Shadow Trooper was capable of using, it was only a few of them, including the likes of Force Lightning, Force Repulse, Force Push, Force Choke, and Force Mailstorm. Although for the more complex abilities such as Force Repulse and Mailstorm, they were nowhere near the level of an individual like Starkiller, and they more focused on the more basic combative gifts of the Force like Force Push and very basic Force Lightning. And a Shadow Trooper never ascended to the level where they could use an ability such as Sith Alchemy. As far as equipment and weaponry, a Shadow Trooper did actually have quite a bit. Underneath their long black robes, they laid themselves in complete body armor, which could actually withstand glancing blows from a lightsaber, although a direct hit would absolutely pierce through it. A Shadow Guard also wielded a rare variant of a lightsaber known as a lightsaber pipe, and a red synthetic crystal, meaning every single member of the Shadow Guard had a red lightsaber pipe. They also had specifically trained in a lightsaber form to use the lightsaber pipe, and it is believed that many of the Shadow Guard actually specialized in Form 1 lightsaber combat, as they used wide sweeping movements and power attacks against their enemies, but were not skilled enough to move on to a more difficult lightsaber form such as Form 2 Makashi, or even the dueling variant of Form 5 to Gem So, and therefore only stayed in the realm of Form 1 Shicho. Form 1 was described like this. Form 1, it is simple, and its simplicity is its strength. In addition to their lightsaber pike, every single member of the Shadow Guard carried a heavy blaster pistol, as well as a utility belt which in most cases carried a med pack and ammunition. In rare cases, Shadow Guards even carried cloaking devices, again though this was rare. But that is pretty much a full breakdown on the Shadow Guards that answered directly to Emperor Palpatine during the reign of the Empire. Pretty much everything we know about their origins, their fighting style, their weaponry, as well as their characteristics. But what are your thoughts on the Shadow Guards and their role within the Empire? And as sort of a big question for the video, how do you think a Shadow Guard would stack up against a Jedi Padawan? Which of the two combatants do you think would ultimately come out on top? Again guys, be sure to check the link in the description down below for some discounted Star Wars merch. I'm sure you guys will like at least a few of the designs, at least I do. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. May the Force be with you and have a great day.